Thank you, Alex. With me also, I have our Mayor Pro Tem, Sherry Lane. Sherry, will you come forward? One of our, we're going to have a lot of problems with Jay Johnstone, so I want to tell you ahead of time, I'm very sorry. He's played for every Major League Baseball team. He grew up in West Covina, and we were so happy when he moved to Pasadena many years ago. <laughs> but he's going to be on me all day. Also from our Community Service Commission, we have Betty Baez. V Betty, will you please come forward? She's a longtime commissioner and a longtime volunteer in our community. Our uh, deputy city manager, Chris Freeland. Chris. And the guys your league works with, uh, one who we have assigned to all of our uh, sports that handle the sports facilities, Travis. Travis. Do you want me to introduce Jay? Oh, my gosh. We'll do the other people behind him. In the yellow shirt, a longtime uh, board member, a volunteer here, and his son and daughter both played here. Bill Skelton, Bill. Oh my gosh. And uh, another board member, and uh, they're above the board member. They're the district reps or whatever the zone leaders are. Steve Lang, another both West Covina residents. Steve Lang. This guy I'm about to introduce, he played where the city hall and courthouses, that used to be West Covina National Little League many years ago. Um, he played there in, I'm not sure what years, 1908 through 19. <laughs> but grew up in West Covina. Jay played 20 years in major leagues, a feat accomplished by a few players. He played on eight divisional t um, title winning teams. He has four World Series rings. He has a lifetime batting average in the World Series of 435. He holds the highest batting average in National League Championship play of 778. In 1976, he was the 10th in NA National League batting with an average of 318. In 1977, he led the National League in hitting with 329 but missed the batting title because he was 12 at-bats short. He authored three best-selling books, two of which made the prestigious New York Times bestseller list. He has, a, he has broadcast games for Prime Ticket, ESPN, KABC Radio, the Yankees, the Phillies, Fox Sports, the Pac-10, and the Big West. He was the host of three different networks and nationally syndicated TV shows and appeared in several commercials and movies. He has also hosted several... Uh, radio shows. He has traveled the country as a corporate speaker giving very, very numerous talks and motivational speaking. If he can only tell you the one story when he was in the training camp with that nurse and uh, the, having to do the test, um, you can do that here today. His company, Sports Things and More, works with 350 to 400 nonprofits each year to help raise money by providing items for silent and live auctions. STM also books athletes for events. Sorry, the wind's blowing. On baseball clinics for kids and one day baseball fantasy camps for adults. In 2010, Jay became the national spokesperson for Hope for Heroes, an organization based in San Antonio, Texas that raises funds for our troops who are wounded in action. In the near future, Jay will be the host of a new radio sports show, the Jay Johnstone Show. He's been a Paul Harris Fellow in Rotary for 28 years, and he's just a personal friend of ours, like I said, a longtime resident, and uh, one of the great players in our city's history, Jay Johnstone. This is dangerous. We're going to turn it over to Jay for a moment. Just a moment. I hope. Thank you all very much. It's always a pleasure to come back to your home roots in West Covina. As you heard Mike say, I played up where the courthouse and the police department is. So that brings back a few memories. I'll leave it at that. Um, but it's a pleasure to come out here and be a part of this because when you have all these young kids and you bring them out here, in all the uniforms. You heard Alex talk about some of the issues that Pony League has today. 
and they need your help and they need your involvement as a parent or a grandparent or whatever because this is a nonprofit organization. People don't get paid to do this. All the things you see out here, all the things that go on are all done because of volunteer work. You don't have fields like this. You don't have people show up and do the snack shops. You don't have a lot of things going. It's all volunteer. So when you can, when you find some time, if you can contact Alex or any of the board directors and volunteer your time, whether it's helping fix the fields or whatever it is, they could sure use the help because this is how our young men and our young girls that play in these, on these fields, this is how they grow up and they learn. And not only do they learn about athletics, they learn about sportsmanship and about winning and about losing, but most importantly, they make friends. They make friends here, and I still have. I still have, from my Little League days at the West Community National League, four friends that I am in touch with. One is a professor over in the University of Colorado. Another is a, uh, was a contractor uh, in Hawaii. Another is a, uh, was a police captain who uh, left West Covina, uh, moved up to um, San Gabriel, now is back in New York. And we still converse. So the friends you make here as teammates sometimes last with you for a lifetime. And you young players that are playing out here, listen to your coaches because your coaches are here to help you. I know some of you are very young, some of you are getting a little older. The most important thing you can do when you play this game is play it to the best of your ability because you're not going to win every game. There's going to be a lot of times where you make mistakes and you lose games, but that's the fun part about baseball. You can always come back the next day or the next weekend and play. So listen to your coaches and what they have to say. And you older Pony Leaguers. The only thing I can tell you to make yourself better is work on what you're good at. Work on what you're good at. I've seen a lot of major leaguers come and go. And not all major leaguers can have all the tools necessary to be a great player. But the good ones just work on what they're good at. If you're a shortstop, you work on catching ground balls and the double play combinations. If you're a left fielder, you work on your throwing and throwing to the bases and strengthening your arm, getting a good jump on the ball. If you're a hitter, you work on getting a strike in the strike zone and not swinging at bad pitches. There's a lot of times, there's a lot of times when you are going to look bad or you're not going to do well. Remember, this is the only sport in the whole wide world. This is the only sport in the whole wide world where at 30% you are a hero. If you kids got 30% on a test tomorrow, what would be up in the right-hand corner in red? Big F, right? If you're a basketball player and you shoot 30% from the free throw line or the floor, you're sitting next to the coach. If you're a football player and you run out for a pass and catch three and drop seven for 30%, you're on the bench. If you're a quarterback and you drop back for 10 passes and throw seven interceptions and complete three for 30%, you probably played for the Rams when they were here. Every other sport... In this world, at 30%, you are a total failure. In baseball, you are a hero. So just remember that. And you can count on one hand at the end of each professional baseball year how many guys hit 300 or better. So it's very, very difficult. And you moms. My mom was great in the snack shop. She helped out a lot. And I always thought my dad ran the, uh, the baseball side of the family because he would coach and he would do the things that most fathers like to do and come out. And one day, the umpire didn't show up, so my dad as a coach volunteered to be the umpire. And I was the second hitter in the lineup. My mom was in the snack shop, and the snack shop at West Covina used to be right back here with the big window. And so as I approached the plate, I looked at my dad. I didn't say anything. I got in the batter's box, and I stood there, and the first pitch was thrown was a foot outside, and I hear, strike one! Now, in my heart, I knew that wasn't a strike. And I knew that he was probably doing that, so he wasn't trying to show any favoritism. But before I could say a word, out of the snack shop came this booming voice, John, that's our son! <laughs> right then, I know who ran the baseball part of our family. But please do get involved. And as Alex said, if you have problems, don't yell at the kids. Don't take it out out here. If you have an issue with your coach or the manager, please come down and see Alex and ask him for a uniform. And then come on the field 
and see what it's like to do it from on the field. And then you can get an idea. So when you have problems, think about that. Because the kids are here to learn, they're here to have fun, but most importantly, you're here to watch your son or daughter grow up, play baseball, make friends, and have a good time. So on that, I will leave it up to there. I'll be more than happy to be around a little bit afterwards. But thank you all for supporting this league because this is where I got my start. And I so thoroughly love coming back to West Covina. So good luck and thank you, everybody. The story Jay doesn't want to tell you about, every league, every year you have to do a urine test in Major League Baseball. But oh, no, you'll take it too long. So before he went and did the urine test, he filled up his, his bottle with apple juice. Okay? <laughs> they went and tested it and said, we, uh, Mr. Johnstone, we have a problem with your test. And he goes, I don't understand what the problem is. So he took the, the bottle and drank it. And the nurse passed out. So it was just great that... <laughs> Jay is one of the comedians, but on behalf of the city of West Covina, we truly want to thank you all for coming out here. As a private citizen and business person here, I've been involved in this league for 34 years, from my days when I owned the dairy and also the pizza parlor, who's still your, one of your sponsors. We just greatly appreciate everything you guys do here as a league, parents, volunteers, and the kids. Um, this is my last year ever as mayor in the city of West Covina. Obviously, my term is up in 2013, and I am not running for re-election for the city council. I want to thank you all for a tremendous amount of times I've been involved with all you guys here. It's been great. Um, we have a lot of things going on in the city, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the things we have going on. It's like these lights here. When we put the lights on the Mustang field, we get threatened all the time by different people because they disagree. We lit every field at every park at least one team has one lit field we were threatened by recall for doing that at every park we did this at and this was to encourage families to spend time with their kids so you could actually have night games and your particular field already did this the parents paid for it here on the bronco field this was done by your league at your expense the city lit the other fields um, throughout our city and it's just, it's one of those things you have here no matter what you do these days as a politician you're terrible and you're wrong I'm gonna say we do our best we have a great city and I want to thank you for everything you guys contribute because we've known Alex for years we just inducted Alex into our walk of fame at Big League Dreams and it was great we appreciate Alex for all you do and the time you put in for the kids, we want to wish you the best of luck out here. My son played here, and I do appreciate being a, a parent from this league, how great this league is, and that's why my son enjoyed his time here. As he has grown, and he is 6'6 now, he doesn't really play baseball anymore. He plays basketball, but it's been a great league. Kids, I want to wish you the best. This is the best. Treat each other with great sportsmanship, and thank you very much for coming out here today.